to be able to use the class back. Right. Statistics, right. statistics. Class back usage is quite important. Tomorrow we'll do a little bit more. Tomorrow we'll look at the graphs and looking at determining some of the values using your class back. All right. So today, basically, just a quick revision of what binomial distribution is and use class back to calculate the probability. All right. Now, so just recall the probability mass function for binomially distributed discrete random variable x, which is a binomial distribution with parameter n and p, where x is the number of success, n is the number of trials, p is the probability of success. All right? you must know that there's always a fixed number of trial n. Each trial must be either success or failure. One is success, zero is failure. And that's a probability um, associated, associated with success, a probability associated with failure. All right? They are complement of each other. They add up to one. All trials must be independent. So trial 1 cannot affect trial 2, cannot affect trial 3, or 4 and 5. All right? The probability of success P is the same in each trial. So probability of success for all the trials are the same. And the variable is the total number of successes in the end trials. All right? Now, in the exam, you must always state this. All right? It's quite important so that you know that there's a number of trials, and that is your probability of success. All right. Now, with the class back. So if you are given um, hmm? uh, so the number of trials, <coughs> the probability Excuse me. of success of each trial. Uh, uh, x, a discrete random variable, is a binomial. It's a binomial distribution. Yeah. Eight trials and uh, probability success of zero point three. You need to determine probability of x equals to two. Correct to three decimal places. Now, so this notation means x has a binomial distribution where n, number of trials, is 8, and p is 0 0.3. All right? So let me write this down. I'll guide you through using your class back. So x being 8, 0 0.3, probability of x equals to 2. All right? Get your class back up. I've summarized it on the... Uh, on the screen, but I would Sorry, like to uh, yeah. use class back to show it to you properly. Of one trial, All right. one individual trial. Now, from there, you need to, hang on, let me... Because this is a monthly subscription thing, every time I every time I don't use it on my iPad at the start of the month, I've got to renew it. Alright, now what you need to do is go to May. Alright? I would say clear everything first. Clear all variables and clear all. So it's a binomial distribution, you go to interactive. Alright? Under interactive, go to distribution, inverse distribution. All right, here. Oops. Distribution, inverse distribution, that bit there. So tap on that. Now, we are not working on continuous yet. We'll look at continuous uh, distribution in uh, unit four. We go to discrete. Here, you need to think about Binomial PDF or binomial CDF. CDF is when we have something less than or greater than. We are doing cumulative that stage. We are not doing it now. This one, first example, is discrete and is binomial PDF. All right? Probability uh, distribution function. All right? CDF is cumulative okay. distribution function. All right? PDF. And it will come up with this. So here... If you look at x, that bit here is actually number of trials, which in this case we are going to put it as 2. 
So num trial, next bit is total number of trials. This is total number of trials. This is x equals to two sets. All right. So that is the total number of trials, which is in this case uh, eight, and then the probability of success, which is zero point three. So it's quite good if you tap on that. It actually explains what it is. That's a specific trial. All right, zero to n. So you want two trials to be successful, zero to n. You know that the total number of trials. Next one is eight, and then that total number of trials, and then this bit here is the probability of success, POS, 0.3, and you click OK. It gives you the number, all right? If you don't want to go to interactive, if you can remember something like this, what the first one means, second one means, and third number means, you could go to action, distribution, Discrete binomial PDF. You could do the same thing as well. Two, comma eight, comma point three. We'll give you the same answer. Mm -hmm. Or if you want, you can even go to under keyboard. Go to this the catalog. Tap on B, and you can you can have your binomial PDF. All right. And then two comma eight comma point three. You get the same thing. So there are three ways of doing that. Interactive will give you all the explanation of the numbers here. All right. So interactive will tell you this is trial is two. That's called. That is total number of trials, and then there's probability of success. All right. Because you passed the trial. Happy with that? Yeah. So if you're happy with that, we'll go back and look at the next bit. All right. So I've summarized it. So you can, you 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 should be able to write down p x equals to two is zero point two nine six. All right, to three decimal places. All right, this is specifically asking for three decimal places. Now, same thing. This time, what you want is probability less than 2. All right? You know that probability less than or equals to 2 is the same as probability x equals to 0 plus probability x equals to 1 plus probability x equals to 2. Correct? Yeah? So, now, this time it's cumulative. You're going to add 0, add 1, add 2, and so on and so forth. Yeah? So let's go to your class back. Ah, wrong one. Class back. So again, I would clear everything. Go to main and edit, clear everything. Clear all variables, clear all. I'm going to start again. Back to interactive. All right? Interactive distribution. Again, discrete. This time, you are looking at Binomial CDF. CDF, cumulative distribution function in here. CDF. So remember, P is a probability, C is a cumulative. Alright, tap on that. Now, what is the lower bound? So the lower bound here in this case, 0 to 2. Right? So you type in 0 and upper bound is 2. See, that's lower boundary, upper boundary is 2. And then again, the num trial, total number of trial is 8. Uh, not 28. Total number of trial is 8. And position uh, probability, POS, probability of uh, success is 0.3. Alright? And click OK. You get 0 0.55177381. That's your answer. Now, again, you can go through action. You can go through uh, keyboard. I'm not going to show you that now because I've shown you just now. Just remember you can do through interactive or action. Same thing. Action, distribution, discrete, and binomial CDF. All right? So this is what you will get. 
two things. Practice some today because there will be some from club that I want you to do. So if you are given something like probability of x greater than 0, you work out probability of x less than 2, one thing away there. Right? So remember cumulative, use CDF. So I've sum summarized this for you. Probability of single outcome, you use PDF. A range of outcome, you use CDF. I mean, there are more to it than that. All right? All right. Oh, there should be a P there. I missed the P. My fault. Those of you who downloaded it, can you please update that? There should be a P, probably T. All right, happy with that? Now, the next one, can you actually try this, please? forward has a probability of 0 0.3 of kicking a goal from a free kick. So if he's awarded 8 free kick in a range of goals in a match, find the probability correct to 3 decimal places that he kicked 2 goals. So what is N? What is P? 0.3. 8 and 0 0.3. Yep, that's correct. So, oops, you need to write down I will always write down, since you know that this is uh, this is either you can is either go or not a go, so it's a binomial. So x is binomially distributed and total number of trials eight and zero point three. Alright? Now the assumption here is that the second key his emotion is not affected by the previous key. Mm. Alright? So you got to think about that. So all, all every time he kicks, he's the footballer. Yeah, uh, the Wait, no, uh, the whatever. Uh, the full forward will just have the same mindset. Nice, yeah? So that is an assumption that you have to make. Mm. Because yeah, it has to be independent. Alright? Oh. So now you know that there's two goals. Right. Basically, it's what I've shown you just now. So the probability is 0 0.26, whatever. So at least two goal. So at least two goal is greater than two. So this is probability. So this is a probability of x equal to two is. Um, 0 0.296 Alright? Now, probability of at least two goals So part B Probability of X greater than equals to two Alright? It's actually equals to One minus probability of X less than two Correct? Yeah? Which is only probability of zero and one Alright, so if you do that, or you can use probability between 2 and 8. Or is equal to probability of x between 2 and 8. Because maximum is 8 only. Either one. So you can use one minus that, or if you use the CDF lower bound and upper bound, you can come up with your uh, answer, which equals to 0. Point 745. Alright? Mm. That's it. Mm. Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright. So this is using class back tomorrow. We'll use oh, it shit. a little bit more. That's cool. So there's some exercise in class for, for you to do. Now we need to think about the mean and variance of a binomial distribution. If you know <laughs> the Bernoulli distribution, <laughs> you know the expected value of Bernoulli distribution is P. Variance is P times 1 minus P or PQ and standard deviation is square root. Now, since binomial distribution involves N Bernoulli trials, alright? So the expected value in N lots of the expected value of each, uh, the expected value of N lots. Wow, yeah. what, did I, what did I type in? What is young? 
Ah, uh, okay, so, sorry. I will recap that. So, what you basically, what I basically mean is binomial distribution involves n Bernoulli trials. So, if you have n lots of Bernoulli trials, it's n times p. All right, the expected value of a and expected value of a binomial distribution is n times p. Right, I will, I will, I will redo that. I don't know what I typed in. Wait, so All right, can you, can you go from the top again? Yeah. And then I'll leave so you. similarly, it will be n lots of variance of each trial. <laughs> not. And lots of the expected value. Yeah, it's all right. So the expected value is n lots of the expected value of each trial p. Yeah. 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 That's all right. Can, can yeah. you go from the top? So it's basically. Can you go from the? You look. Yeah, you are done. No. So this is Bernoulli distribution. Yeah. So each one Bernoulli distribution is either it's it's either uh, win or loss. Win uh, success or failure. Yep. Yeah. 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 So you got the expected value is p probability. Yeah. P and then the variance is P times one minus P. I've shown it to you the last yeah. last uh, last lesson. Yeah. So here if a binomial distribution involves N lots of our binomial trials. Mm -hmm. Bernoulli trials. Mm -hmm. Binomial distribution involves N lots of Bernoulli trials. So therefore the expected value for the binomial distribution is N lots of the uh, expected value of the Bernoulli distribution. Yep. Yep. And um, the variance will be n lots of the variance of uh, mm. the the variance of Bernoulli distribution. Mm. All right. So basically, multiply the expected value by n. The variance is n times p yeah. minus uh, t times one minus p. And the standard deviation is just a square root of the variance. That's all. All right. Uh, I think like these I are all given to you. This these are all given to you in the uh, formula sheet. You don't have to remember that. Just one last example, a uh, two last examples. So if you know that, you should be able to work out what did you say that? <laughs> the expected value, the variance, and the standard deviation. Basically using, write down, you know that um, x is binom binomial distribution with parameters n and p. And ex equals n times p. So the probability of success is 0 0.8, 130 times, that's uh, not 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 130 times 0 0.6 will give you 78. The variance is n times p, 1 minus p. Now, you already know that this is 78, correct? And p? Yeah. So 1 minus p is a 0.4. Yeah. And that's 0.4 of a... Uh, yeah. 78 is 31.2 and standard deviation is the square root of that. 5.59. Alright? Now, the next bit, you know that there's a mean of 12 and the variance of 9. So, n times p equals to 12. n times p times q equals to 9. Right? So, you've got two equations, two variables. You can solve that. np equals to 12, yeah. np equals times 1 minus p equals to 9. So, if I substitute np as 12, you know that that's 12. 12 times 1 minus p equals to 9. You should be able to work out p equals 1 quarter. Mm -hmm. And therefore, working backwards, n equals to 48. Pretty straightforward lesson today. We will do a little bit more tomorrow. There should be exercises uh, in...